2009 was a great year for music. So many new exciting careers were starting to come into the spotlight, and when I look back that's personally one of my go-to years for some pop music nostalgia. But of course, as every year in music, 2009 built a momentum for some bubbling artists that would explode and we'd never hear from them again. But the person we're going to talk about today has had an odd trajectory of his career. It's almost like he pops in every few years, says hi, and then he leaves again. Mike Posner. Always played the underground in his career, almost from the beginning. He was told in the world that someone was too cool for him, and then a few years later, he had a smash hit talking about his life as a washed up pop star. The irony in that. And I hope that's actual irony, if not, the English nurse can correct me in the comments. But even though I was talking about 2009, which was an essential year for Posner gaining traction, it wasn't until 2010 that he would take the pop music world under his wing. He initially started off as a producer, and that led him to creating his own music and getting signed. Arguably his most popular single, which also served as his debut, Cooler Than Me was released in spring of that year, and it catapulted to the top of the charts, reaching a peak of number 6 and being certified multi-platinum. The song is a great pop song. He has a very distinctive voice, which instantly sets him apart. It has an instant hook. The song is punchy and it just builds upon the hook the entire song. And he followed this hit up with my favorite song from him, Please Don't Go, which is a banger. And it also follows up the continuing theme of Mike not being good enough for his significant other. It's literally a song just begging your significant other to stay. With his debut single, he was talking about how he has a crush on someone, but they're too cool for him, and it had a bitter undertone. With Please Don't Go, he's much more somber and vulnerable. This also went on to be quite successful and be certified platinum. And then came his debut album, 31 Minutes to Take Off. It explored similar themes as his singles, however it significantly underperformed, selling less than 30,000 copies in its first week, which compared to the success of his singles really made no sense, and he struggled to attain another radio hit. Mike wrote an open letter to his fans about his underperformance and what caused him to stray away from music for a while. He goes on to say, I assume most of you know that I released my debut album 31 Minutes to Take Off in August 2010. The sales of this album were largely driven by the success of my first single, Cooler Than Me. After this album, I released a free mixtape entitled The Layover in November 2011, while I completed my sophomore album, Sky High. Sky High featured a predominantly urban sound that included collaborations with J. Cole, Big Sean, and Pharrell Williams. Unfortunately, without another big radio song, it was unlikely that enough people were going to buy Sky High for RCA to justify spending the necessary money involved in releasing an album. Record labels generally pay for radio promotion, marketing, as well as music videos. Or at least the single looks like sex, but it felt to live up to the success of Cooler Than Me, and thus the record label understandably had no plans to invest further funds into my project. And the music industry referred to this situation as being shelved. It means that my album was completed, but it was not going to be released. Let me make very clear that I love all the people at RCA, they are not the villains of the story. They were simply doing their jobs to the best of their ability, and if I were in their position, I would have done the same thing. I'm grateful for the opportunities they brought to me in our time together. He still continued to make music but struggled to gain back his success, and in 2014, he asked to be released from RCA because he felt that his career was at a standstill and they agreed to let him go. However, during the time where his pop star career wasn't going well, he took some time to write some of your favorite pop star's biggest hits up until that point. Boyfriend by Justin Bieber and Sugar by Maroon 5, which actually makes so much sense because he started off as a producer and someone who worked behind the scenes. And then came 2015's I Took a P in Ibiza. We could not escape this song and it ultimately became the biggest song of his career. In the song, he talks about his struggles with fame, drugs, and spending all of his money. An extremely honest song, thanks to the production duo Sieb that remits the song, the entire world got to hear it. He released his second album at night alone, which was noted for being a huge progression from his debut album, and he's still releasing music and mixtapes to this day. However, if you've been pretty active on social media, you'll see that Mike has been up to some good. He's walked across the country, literally. On his website, Posner said the journey had a three-part mission, to enjoy my life and help others enjoy theirs, be as authentic to other people as possible, and help others to experience transcendence. He even got bit by a rattlesnake, but continued his journey and he did finish his walk gracefully. I guess this was his way of finding inner peace. 
And I think it's an admirable thing to see that even though you've achieved a lot of great things, you can still come down, be humble, and be so vulnerable and open to people about your problems and things you would like to do to change that, or better yet, in Mike's case, actually pursue that action of changing it. As for music, he still continued releasing mixtapes, and he seems like he's finally stopped chasing fame or validation for it, and found what he was looking for, his inner peace. He went on to say, I had nothing inside me that wanted to go to a radio station and try to convince them to play my song more than Ariana Grande. I didn't want to do incessant interviews to maximize my fame and income. I didn't have it in me to do it again. <laughs>